Welcome back to Heroes Next Door. Thank you all for watching. Today we are working our way across America. We made our way from Pennsylvania all the way to Michigan. This is just outside of my hometown of Grand Rapids. We are in Kentwood and we're going to do the Kentwood Fire Station number one. Let's go talk to their chief and see what they have. So as we're walking in, I want to give you a little bit of background on this. This station was built in 1991. It's one of three stations they have here at Kentwood. Uh, they have two other stations that we may or may not take a look at, but this houses their administrative office. We're going to take a look at that, but first, let's go talk to the chief and he can show us around. Hey chief, how you doing today? Hey Mike, Brent Lowman, the fire chief, how you doing? Not too bad. Beautiful place you have here. We traveled from Pennsylvania all the way to Michigan and uh, I took a walk around the outside before I came in. You got a beautiful piece of land here. Yeah, thank you. The station was built in 1991 and we housed uh, six firefighters on a 24 hour shift and the administration offices here. So let's take you around. All right, let's go. All right, Mike, this is our um, firefighter work area. So we've got um, color, uh, kind of our dispatch area, although we don't dispatch out of here. We get dispatched from the Kent County Sheriff's Department. Okay. But this is where all of our reports writing is done. And then the captain's office is right over here um, where they um, kind of uh, oversee the shift. And then the, there's a battalion chief that stays on the other side of the building. Right. And then um, these guys kind of run the, the firefighters and, and run that shift. Okay. And then uh, all their report writing is done in here. And then um, we have actually additional workstations because as you well know, we do a lot of paperwork. Right, right. So. Paperwork is one of the you know hardest things about the job in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. and uh, we run a lot of EMS. So EMS okay. uh, certainly takes uh, a lot of our time um, with EMS runs and paperwork. Are you first responders? Are you EMTs? Are you paramedics? What do you run as far as EMS? Yeah, so we're a, a basic life support. We don't, we do not transport, okay. um, but we do have um, all EMTs or paramedics on staff. Our minimum requirement is EMT. Okay, so you'd be equivalent to here on, on the East Coast, I call that a QRS, quick response unit. Uh, that doesn't do transport, almost a chase car kind of thing. Right, and in this station, we have an engine and a medic unit that would respond on EMS calls, um, typically separately. Okay. Um, due to the overlapping type calls we may uh, have in this area with the, the amount of calls that come into this station. Right. But we also run engines on medicals. Right. Yep. I love this room. I like the fact that, you know, just looking out, you can see my truck, you know, you can see the public as they come in. It's a very bright, even though you have darker walls, it's very comfortable in here to write trip sheets. Yeah, especially for a 30 year old building. And yeah. We've, we've been, uh, you know, we've been working hard at maintaining the times, I guess you can say, and trying to change as we go. Right. So then we go right into your crew room. So this is the relaxation room. Yep. Okay. So um, at night is when we um, will allow for um, folks to be in here. Okay. And then uh, that's kind of their downtime. Uh, we do run a lot of uh, fire and EMS out of this building. so. Okay. There's a lot of uh, sleepless nights, so sometimes they just kick back in the in the chairs and right. wait for the next run. So how big is your department? Uh, you have two other stations that we may or may not be able to see today, but we're going to see this one. You have yeah. two other stations, right? Yep. So this is station one, our central station. Okay. We have two more stations that have three on duty in each station, and then uh, this station's got six on duty, okay. um, 24 hours. How many calls do you guys run on, on average in a year? So just over 5,000 runs a wow, year. Wow, that's pretty so, big. Um, that's pretty big. Yep, uh, about 70% CMS. Okay. The other 30% is uh, other type calls and fire calls. What kind of coverage area do you cover? Like how big? Yeah, we're about 22 square miles. The city is kind of shaped like the like a backwards letter L. Okay. Really. So we have a lot of um, commerce that comes in and out, a lot of factory. We have a lot of um, a bedroom district also. Okay. Um, but a lot of commercial. Very nice. I'll be definitely taking a tour around too. Yeah, so. you bet. I love the uh, fact that you got Uber Collars for everybody that, that needs it. Yeah, here. yep. We got everybody, everybody can take a seat. And right so, in here is your kitchen. So this is the this kitchen is area. Nice. Yep. So this is, um, you know, all, all three meals. Okay. Um, we've got three shifts, A, B, and C shift. So this is, uh, they're, they're, each one's got a specific um, refrigerator. Okay. And, but then, of course, 
um, A shift would be on one day and B shifts on the next, and then so they don't intermix right. all the stuff. Cabinets for yep. A, B, and C shift. They got pantries for each. From what I understand, this is where all the problems get solved. This is where the problems <laughs> get solved. You bet. You bet. <laughs> yep. This is uh, this is actually a good spot to um, actually get some tabletop training done. Also, right. So we're we do a lot of um, table trap 15 minute drills. We call them quick drills. Okay. And so those are done almost daily with every shift. Very cool. So yeah, I like that. So nice place here. You got a patio out back. Yep. Wow. And nice weather. You got a little area to sit outside. Is that all fenced in back there? Um, except for just a little area, but it does shroud it from the road. Okay. Yep. Okay. What else do we have back here? Okay. So That's we have nice these restrooms. Restrooms and showers. All right. Oh, locker wow. room. Nice big locker room. Yep. Okay. It looks like the guys are cleaning. So the guys the are cleaning, yep. Hello. This is a typical um, firefighter bunkhouse with, uh, right. we've got about seven beds here for the the six six uh, staff. Okay. So we got actually some extra room. This um, reminds me of the old emergency show where they had the lower walls, everybody kind of sleeps in. Or even today, uh, Chicago Fire. Yeah. They kind of have these uh, lower walls and bunk rooms rather you, than separate rooms. Yeah. So. Uh, you know, and the, and the trend seems to be to, to go to a higher wall and, and give more privacy. So someday we'll probably see that should we remodel or re, rebuild the station. Right, right. But uh, it houses everybody very comfortably. Everybody's, yeah, everybody's very comfortable. We have a new heating and cooling system in here to try to maintain, especially since the COVID stuff, turning over air exchanges more often. Right, right. So, yeah, right, yeah. you bet. This is a good way to do it. Yeah, this is uh, excellent. It, it, it brings you really back good. to that tradition of what firehouses yeah, are about. Yeah, it does work out really good for us. It's close to the apparatus bay, so they can get out to the, the medic or the, the engine very quickly at night. Right, right. So. All right, let's keep uh, going around. Okay, so sounds good. So next we're gonna go to the engine bay or we're gonna go to administrative offices. Well, we've got another section of the building okay. so where the administration is staffed, so we can go over there and take a look at that. Okay, before we go over there, I wanna do us a favor. Hit subscribe, hit notification so we can keep building this. We're trying to get that 100,000 subscriber mark. With you guys, we can do that. So uh, let's go uh, walk out and go to your second entrance. Yeah, second entrance. Let's All right, go. and then we'll come back to the engines. You got it. Awesome. So Chief, tell us a little about yourself. Well, I've been um, with the department just over 30 years. i um, been the chief for the last 11 years. And um, uh, deputy chief prior to that and spent a few years as the fire marshal inspections and firefighter. Are you a first generation or are you second, third? So I'm a second. Okay. So my father is retired also from this department back in 1997. Right. And uh, so following his footsteps, I also have a brother that's a chief in a local department um, not too far away from here also. Awesome. Awesome. So, we thank you for your service. Thank you. So now we're at the administrative side. Yep. Uh, so let's go see your offices. Okay. You bet. Sounds good. All right. So Mike, real quick, here's our, uh, our department of photos we've taken over the last 25 years or so. And uh, this is the most current uh, from 2021. Okay. And uh, we actually had this uh, done locally. Um, and uh, this kind of just shows the history of the department. Okay, how many firefighters do you actually have? So currently we're at um, 45. Okay. And then we'll be uh, adding six more this year. Okay. And are they all full-time firefighters? Are they part-time firefighters? Yeah, so everybody is uh, full-time. It's a career department. Okay. We don't have any part-time employees. Um, prior we did, but it, it's been difficult to maintain that. Okay. So, okay. so this is our administrative offices, um, and part of it anyway. And this is where the fire marshal works out of. And, uh, does uh, plan, some plan reviews in here. Does uh, most of his administration of work here. He's out of the office doing inspections right now. Okay. And then it's a little unusual to have a fire marshal in the fire station. They're usually a separate entity that comes from. Yeah, in, in our area, it seems like it's, it's pretty common, um, but a lot of departments don't have fire marshals. They may just have an inspector or someone out doing um, just annual business inspections. Right. To where um, we've focused uh, quite a bit on business inspections. Okay. And we notice uh, a trend in uh, reducing our, our calls for service. Okay. Um, so we actually have a fire marshal and two inspectors on duty uh, Monday, to, Monday to Friday. Okay. And that's that's very nice for the township. It's absolutely, you bet. Yeah. So, yeah. so you got a conference office down there. Yep. Uh, and then you got your fire marshal office. Back here we have. Yep. So back here is the, the training room. Okay. Oh, wow. This is a big training room, too. So. 
Uh, it's we just can set it up however we want right and then um, currently we have two new employees that started this week so they've got their new uniforms laid out okay. they've got to gather those up today and, and uh, put them in a locker okay and then we um, we can use this for internal or out you know, external training we can have outside uh, agencies uh, coming in to train with us also what do you normally train in here do you do uh, public safety CPR do you do uh, basically con ed courses, what do you normally teach? Yeah, a little bit of everything. Okay. Um, anything from uh, what, what's required by our fire uh, side for continuing ed credits and then also on our EMS side. We do our own EMS uh, continuing education. Okay. And so we do a lot of EMS continuing ed here. So yeah. anywhere from 30 to 45 credits per year per, per uh, employee. Wow, that's pretty good. Yeah. 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 All right. Okay, we take it out of there, we come back out. This was a reception area, because the yep. foyer. Yep, so we have a reception area that would uh, someone would uh, sit here. We're in between, uh, we just had a retirement, so we're replacing uh, this uh, individual. Okay. This is a plan review area also for the fire marshal, so he can uh, work on laying out larger plans. Right, and right. Then, so the um, blueprints and stuff of the buildings, that's yeah. where you kind of review, make sure yep. the sprinklers are up to date, fire exit codes, all that you kind bet. of stuff. Yep. Okay. We look at everything from a site plan to where the building is going to sit all the way through the full building construction. Okay. All right. So then there's offices here, myself. Uh, um, an, administ uh, an administrative assistant and yep. then a fire inspector and then the deputy chief's office and another fire inspector's office. Okay. And this is the battalion chief's office. So these two offices, I, we noticed that in the other bunk room where we went through, you actually have the Murphy beds for uh, your line officers. They don't necessarily sleep with the crew. Correct. So we want to make sure someone can answer the phone in, uh, very quickly at night. Um, so the battalion chief stays in here. There's a Murphy bed right here, which would just pull down. Right. And then they would stay here. They're much uh, quicker to a computer, much quicker to um, a, a telephone. And then he's quicker to his vehicle because it parks on this side. Of okay. The bay. That's an excellent way to do so, that. You know, all too often they you know, hide them up in a corner or something like that. And they're kind of almost isolated. Yeah. You feel like they're kind of disconnected by putting it all right here. It makes a little bit more flexible space. You can turn an office into a bedroom. Right. As long as you have the proper smoke alarms and, and so forth. <laughs> right. Yep. Well, you, you got bet. your fire inspectors for that. <laughs> yeah, you bet. And then just a restroom down here and then a storage room. And then we're out to the apparatus. Bay. All right. Let's go take a look. Well, Mike, this is our apparatus bay. Wow. It's absolutely huge and beautiful, too. Yeah. Um, so kind of to start, this is um, the coat rack. Okay. So everybody's got um, two sets of turnout gear that works in this station, all three stations. Um, we're, we're very, uh, we think it's very important to make sure everybody has a clean set of gear at all times. So should one be soiled on a fire, uh, it goes to the extractor, which we'll look at in just a minute in the other room. Okay. And then it, it gets cleaned and then people can use a, a backup setting. Gear. Right. This is very typical down on the East Coast to have a lot of the coat racks here. Because this building, again, was built in 1991. So you're, you didn't have to meet that NFPA regulations of having that hot, cold, and warm zones sure. uh, when it was built. Yeah, it's, so. it's very different today than what it was 30 years ago. Right. Um, so. Uh, beyond this, we've got um, some exercise equipment, so we've kind of outgrown our station a little bit. Okay. So the exercise equipment does sit on the apparatus bay floor. We are looking at adding um, onto this building this year okay. to add an exercise room. It does get pretty hot in here in the summertime, and it's kind of difficult to, to be working right. out. Spring and fall is a really good time to work out, but the summertime is a little warm in here. Yeah. So we're working on that. Well, the one thing I noticed when I was walking around, I saw you guys doing some of the work this morning and getting the truck checked. Your guys are jacked. Like so, they're they're pretty fit. You know, I come from the East Coast where a lot of volunteers, not to knock volunteers, right. but I'm feeling like I need to suck it in a little bit. Just so, <laughs> we have a mandatory um, workout program that does require everybody to work out every shift. Okay. So there is a mandatory workout program. I so, think that should be involved in every station you some, know some guys may take it further than others um but <laughs> but but there is a mandatory program yeah yep. that, that's yep. an excellent idea you know on the east coast we don't have that you know they they want you to do it on your own time but to build it into their work day as a mandatory workout program i can definitely see the difference in your guys yeah you bet so. and it's important You're right heart health is very important all right let's take a look at some of your trucks as we okay. go along here sounds good 
So this is a 2016 towel. Um, this is what the battalion chief um, would operate. Okay. Um, so there's three battalion chiefs, one for each shift. Okay. And they're on 24 hour shifts. Can you explain to me a little bit what a battalion chief's duties would be on shift? Because not everybody knows. Some of us are in the fire service, but many of our viewers aren't necessarily in the fire service. What's the duties of a battalion chief? Sure, so a battalion chief kind of oversees all three fire stations, and then he oversees most of our incidents. So. Okay. Um, if it's a large incident, you'll get myself or a deputy chief to respond. But he's our he's our first line of defense when it comes to setting up an incident action plan okay. on a call. So he's the incident commander. He's you doing bet. the 360. He's looking at all the, yep. the he, hazards and, and assigning duties to the crews that are coming in. Absolutely. But he comes out of this station, but he can support the other two. You bet. Yep. He runs all over the city. Uh, he okay. covers all 22 square miles. Okay. And uh, should we get an incident in a, in a neighbor's jurisdiction, um, he will also run into that jurisdiction just so we have accountability for our own okay. people. So on this kind of truck, does he carry his own gear then too? Can he fight fires or yeah. does he normally stay out? Yep, so everything, um, everything's in here. His turnout gear, his air pack, okay. um, helmet, all his supplies that he needs to operate the shift. Um, there's a pullout board in the back for incident command system. Right. And so he's set up and ready to go. Beautiful truck, I yeah, love the red. And right next to it, we have a new truck. Yep, so this is relatively new. This is our medic unit. So this is our first unit out of this station Okay. Um, for any type of medical calls. It also responds on structure fires. Okay. Um, everybody we have here is firefighter, EMT, or firefighter paramedic. Okay. So everything you have here is um, what's required on a, on a, a basic life support, non-transporting unit. Love so the fact that it's a box. It actually looks like a shorter box. So interestingly enough, this is actually a plastic box. Wow. So it's um, made by a company that uh, builds the water tanks and okay. the fire engines. They've uh, kind of spread out and now they're building plastic bodies. Okay. So it's really good for winter for us. It doesn't corrode, it doesn't rust, and all we have to do really is, is wash it at the end of the shift and it's, it's good. It's we don't good. have to worry about it rotting off. Yeah. The other thing is, is the weight. All too often, especially on the ambulance side of it, we. Oh, we put so much weight on these trucks and it wears down the brakes and all those kind of stuff. By something, putting a little bit lighter, you're not gonna have as much wear and tear on these trucks as you did. You bet. We tried to keep it small so we don't over you know, populate all these compartments with too much weight. So we were very careful with the manufacturer on what, how much weight could go in this unit without okay. being overweight. Okay. Yep. All right, and this is typically, you said your medic unit, which is yep. your quick response unit for the East Coast. This is the quick response unit. Yep, okay. yep. this runs out the door um, on all primary EMS calls out of this station. Should this unit be tied up, then uh, engine 51 would be taking the next medical okay. in the area. So okay. this is also a BLS, uh, basic life support, non-transport unit, staffed again by firefighter EMTs or firefighter paramedics. Right. Um, this is a um, 2018 Spartan. It's got a 500 gallon tank and a 1500 gallon uh, per minute pump. And again, it's got all of our EMS unit uh, okay. stuff right here. So Nice and clean. Yep, our, yeah. our Lucas device, which is our CPR device. Yeah. Every one of our units has a CPR device on it. Um, and then uh, you got two bags, one's for kind of your first in bag and the other one's an oxygen bag. Right, right. And then of course. Yeah, back in the day when Lucas first came around, we renamed ours to Justin. Just yeah. in case you needed them, he was there. That's a good call. <laughs> That's a good call. So, yeah, beautiful trucks, man. It, so, this is a 2018. It looked brand new. Yep, this is a 2018. This has got um, three people assigned to it on every shift. Okay. So okay. Our, our engines run with uh, three across the city. Gotcha. So on this side of the apparatus bay, you have a couple more rooms, right? Yeah. Well, I can show you those right down here. Okay. Okay, so this is your air fill station. Yeah, so in this area we have our oxygen fill station. Okay. So we can replenish our own oxygen and um, and others uh, close that uh, work right around us. Some other agencies come in for oxygen. And uh, we also repair, we have three technicians that repair all of our self-contained breathing apparatus. So these are units that have just been repaired. They okay. need bottles put back in, but they're in service. Okay. So we do all of our own in-house repairs. Normally we see an air fill station. This is an oxygen fill station. Correct. That's unique because we don't see that usually in the firehouse because you don't use, we wouldn't think you use the oxygen as much because EMS uses oxygen. These are not filled with oxygen. These Correct. are filled with air. Just outside air. So, yep. you know, having your own fill station is a good way to do it. We subcontract. So we, we have to spend money to send in the bottles and get them refilled each, you know, each month, each week, right. depending on how busy we are. 
you guys have the ability to do that and save that kind of money. Yeah, so we partner with a couple other local agencies and we own an oxygen generator and a trailer. Okay. So we split that with our agencies and we're able to come in, we plug it in and we can fill these on about a monthly basis is about how quick we go through 10 bonds. Way to be fiscally so, responsible. Yeah, so. it's free. Yeah. <laughs> it works out really good. Awesome. So you bet. We've got one more um, uh, shop, I guess you could call it here. Okay. Kind of your mechanics room. So this is the mechanics room. This is how we keep things running. Okay. Um, this is the extractor where we make sure all of our turnout gear stays clean. All three of our fire stations have extractors. Make sure we get all of our contaminants out of our turnout gear. So you don't gear. have to fin send them out to get decontaminated. You, you can do bet. that all right we here. We can do it all right here. Yep. And this is our shop area nice where we can do a lot of our own in-house repairs. Right. And then uh, storage room for extra oil dry. Should we run on a car accident, we need to clean up. Um, we make sure we carry plenty of extra oil dry. Okay. What's this thing on the floor here? So th what this is, is this is a uh, a pump that we would use to test our own fire hose. We have about 28,000 feet of fire hose. Okay. And so annually, uh, NFPA requires uh, yeah. a pressure test done on that. So we do that in-house in on our own. Okay. Again, that's another resource that we end up spending a fine at. We have a third party come in and test it. I don't know if it's because it's law, but we always have to pay that fee annually to do that. But you guys are testing your own hoses. We're testing our own in-house, yeah. And I think right. every state may be a little bit different, right. um, but we are allowed in the state of Michigan to, to test this. Again, it saves money. So you bet. Yeah. yeah. All right, we got one more room where we have um, what we call our hose, our hose tower. Okay. All three of our fire stations have a hose tower. <laughs> but a little bit. Oh yeah, so this is where you're gonna dry your hoses after, you know, yeah. after a call. Yep, so we do make sure after a fire, we wash all of our, uh, we have a hose washer. Okay. And we do um, try to decontaminate the hose the best we can. Right. We can hoist them up onto the pipes up in the top. Someone will hang them up there. We let them, you know, run for, you know, let the fan run a couple days. Yeah. And then we'll be able to roll them back up and put them on the Right, on the right. So, now, do you also use this for training? We've seen one, uh, I think in uh, Green, Ohio, uh, they use a training center hose tower too to do some repelling and stuff like that yeah we can it is set up we can go up there and, and do some training with it and we also do uh some training in a neighboring city of wyoming's training set okay yeah okay so if i wanted to become a firefighter with you how would i go about doing that is there a website that i can hit yep so um anytime we post information about jobs it would be under uh, the kentwood.us okay um, so the city of kentwood's webpage uh would host uh, that information um, typically, what we would be looking for is an applicant that would have firefighter one and two, and minimally an EMT certification. Okay. Yep. Okay. And Fair we enough. hire often. Okay. <laughs> Maybe I'll look it up. <laughs> <laughs> so, wow, you got a mid mid mount platform? Yep. This is a 2,000 Sutfin. Um, again, a water is 1,500 GPM pump. This has a 300 gallon tank, uh, and we've owned it since new, so it's t uh, just over 20 years old, 22 years old. And it runs out on our structure fires, and we uh, do a lot of maintenance to make sure it functions every time, even at 22 years old. Yeah. It's a very, very reliable piece of equipment. It, it looks absolutely immaculate. I would not expect this to be a 22-year-old vehicle, especially in Michigan. I grew up in Michigan, so I know how some Michigan cars can be, that salt and the rust and the snow yeah. and everything goes. This looks phenomenal. I love the 51 station, too. Yeah. That kind of brings me back to my old Con Ed, Emergency, you they bet. were 51 also. Yep, yep, you bet. We call that a medic, but in-house we kind of call it a squad 51. Yep. It, it looks similar, yeah. you know, it's not the old Dodge they had on the TV <laughs> show, <laughs> right, thankfully, right. but it's much newer. But right. yeah, this is, um, uh, this is very difficult today to replace because ladders are so expensive, yeah. platform trucks yeah. are so expensive. Yeah. But well, speaking of replacements, we do have a brand new engine sitting here. Okay. We're just starting to work on it. We received it last uh, week Wednesday. Okay, so a little and over seven days ago. Yeah, yeah, this is a 2022 Spartan. Um, it's similar to the truck we just looked at. Uh, this is going to the West Side Fire Station that is going to replace our current engine 53. Okay. Um, it's uh, 2014, has about 100,000 miles on it. And, wow. uh this is what a, what a brand new fire engine looks like. It looks really good in, before Michigan roads. Right, right. So 
what I would like to do, maybe we can do this. Can we do a station rigs of this? Absolutely we can. All you right. bet. We'll show you what we're doing and how it's set up and, and what the whole truck entails. All right. So you guys that are watching, pay attention because we're going to do a station rigs of this. So you're going to see how this thing is put together and all the intricate details on what it takes to put a fire truck into service. So Chief, I want to thank you very much for inviting us out. You know, this is an absolutely dream to come back to my hometown and look at you some bet. of the fire stations that I've, you know, driven past and, and been involved in as a little kid. I always, you know, see the fire trucks coming out. So sure. I appreciate it. It's a beautiful house you have here, great staff, thank you. Uh, everything that it is. So if you guys are watching the show and you want to be part of it, get a hold of the Chief here. Uh, you, you guys bet. are going through a hiring process right now? Yep, we, we've got, um, we, we were taking applications and um, we often take applications. Of the, certainly, just like everybody, the okay. hiring pool is getting smaller and smaller. Right. So we certainly um, encourage anybody uh, that's out there that meets our qualifications for Firefighter 2 and EMT to, to apply. Awesome, you awesome. Bet. Thank you for watching Heroes Next Door today. This was the Station Cribs. Do us a favor, hit that subscribe, hit that notification so we can keep bringing you more. Once again, with your guys' help, we're going to hit that 100,000 subscriber mark. So look forward to next week, and uh, we'll see you again.